It's time for logarithmic equations. My goal is for you to pass the final. Yeah, so you've got to know this stuff before the final. Here is a very basic log equation. This is number eight on your homework. Log base five of x equals one. This first group of problems is going to use um, a method called the definition of a logarithm. There are two methods for solving logarithmic equations and you don't get a choice. When you have logs on one side and numbers on the other side, you have to use the definition of a logarithm, which we've already gone over, but I will review. I'll just say log. The definition of a log. Okay, here's the definition of a log. The argument x equals the base 5 raised to that power. I didn't give myself room, so forget the dots. 5 raised to that power right there, the 1 power. So your answer is x equals 5. Was that easy or was that easy? Take a look at that. Number nine. Log of X. Equals negative three. For this, you have to know what the base is. If you don't see a base, the base is 10. So our answer, let's keep it on the same line, save a little space, is going to be the argument equals the log base right there, the 10, raised to that power, negative three. And then you can put that in your calculator. How do they do it? Yep, put it in the calculator. If you have to. Yeah, you do. Probably you do. Clear, 10 raised to the negative three power, enter is 0 0.001. Calculator says 0 0.001. You can put a zero in front if you want to or not. So these are all going to use the same method. Let's use an LN. Number 10. The natural log of X equals 7. For this, you have to translate log base E of X equals 7 which means x equals e to the seventh power. And you leave the answer like that.
They're being nicer to you than usual here. That's the exact answer. If you got an answer out of your calculator, you'd have to round it, and then it would be an approximate squiggles answer. Just letting you know, just in case you take any future math classes. Okay, now we're getting them a little harder. Number 11, not a lot. This is not a quantum leap. It's just a little baby step, little baby step harder. Log base two of five X minus three equals one. Just go back to American ones for a while. See the whole difference between a European one and an American one is that little thing right there. I've seen some European ones like this. When people write them. Of course, you've got to make sure that is not straight out because it could be mistaken by an American for a seven. That's the problem. So, but math is worldwide. So we all have to understand each other. Which is why I keep trying. All right. We're going to use the definition of a logarithm. And then I have to tell you something else. But right now, the argument 5x minus 3 equals the base 2 raised to that power. So we've got 5x minus 3 equals 2. We're just going to solve that equation. Add 3 to both sides. So you've got 5x equals 2 plus 3, that's 5. Oh my, divide by 5. Divide by 5. X equals 1. Whoa, there I go. Hey, it's about to become a, a habit, maybe. That's a good thing. I've only been working on it for years. Okay, there's more to this than there first appeared to be. It's true. There's something you have to do before you solve logarithmic equations, and I've been saving it to let you get the general method of using the definition of logarithms. But you've got it now. So we're going to talk about one more thing, and that's the argument of the logarithm function. So time out for a note. And then we'll solve some real logarithmic functions. OK, the note is about the argument. Of the log function. Of the. Well, I should say the logarithmic because it applies to all the different logs. Logarithmic. Log. Logarithmic, yes. That is a hard word. Functions. The argument of logarithmic functions. It has to be positive. Not even zero. So every time you do, you solve a logarithm equation you have to make sure the answers you get are going to be acceptable. And that means that we have to solve the argument. We have to put it into an inequality. This inequality. 
5x minus 3 is strictly greater than 0, and then solve that inequality. Plus 3, plus 3. 5x has to be greater than 3. Divide by 5, divide by 5. X is greater than 3 fifths. Our answer to this problem had to be greater than 3 fifths. Not equaling 3 fifths, but actually greater than. And of course, 1 is greater than 3 fifths. 3 fifths is about, well, it's not about, it is exactly 0.6. 1 is definitely greater than 0.6. So we can accept one and put it in the answer box. But now we're about to go on to more advanced logarithmic functions. So let's even write that more advanced. Okay, so number 12 is log x plus log x minus 48 equals 2. Once we start solving the equation, our strategy has to be to smush those two logarithms into one logarithm, log of the argument. Here the base is 10, right? Log base 10 of the argument equals 2. That's our strategy. We'll worry about that later. Right now, kind of a step one, we absolutely have to find the domain because if an answer we get is not in the domain, then we can't use it. We have two arguments, so must, must find domain. So here we go. Here we have one argument. We set it strictly greater than zero. Well, that's already solved, okay. But the next one, x minus 48, is going to have to be greater than zero. Add 48 to both sides. x has got to be greater than 48. So there are two things going on here. Well, the way you figure out your domain is actually a way that we've used before. Draw yourself a little x-axis. It doesn't have to be elaborate. And you've got negative infinity out here and positive. <laughs> no, you don't, silly goose. You've got positive infinity out there and negative infinity out there. And now I'm going to take zero and I'm going to put it where I usually put zero. And then positive 48, well, that's somewhere out here, a long way. So what are we being told here? Well, well, 
If I graph this in blue, then here are the answers I can use. If all I had to worry about was that argument. But x greater than 48, oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Is this really minus 48? Yes, it is. Okay, where'd my thing go? There it is. All right, x is gonna have to be greater than 48. Isn't that delightful? I've worked this before, but never gotten that kind of answer. Okay, X has to be 48. Now, why was I growling? Well, if I get an answer in here, that argument will be happy, but this argument will be unhappy. If I get an answer out here, both of these arguments will be unhappy. But if I get an answer in here, both of these uh, domains, if you want to call them that, of each of the separate arguments, is going to be happy. So this is my domain. I don't have to write it down. I don't have to put it in a box anywhere. But I do have to know that my answer, whatever it is, that I get my solution is going to have to be greater than 48 or I have to throw it out. Yes. Okay, so now I know the answer must be greater than 48. Greater than 48. Now we can solve the problem. So let me rewrite it down here but I'm going to squish these two together by using the product formula. That is the log of X plus the log of X minus 48 is going to be this, the log of X times X minus 48. equals two, and this is log base 10, and now I'm gonna scroll up. And now I have, my goal is met here. I've condensed these, I've smooshed these into one logarithm statement, right there. So I use the product rule to, have, to make that happen. All right, so log base 10 of x squared minus 48x equals 2. Using the definition of a logarithm, I will get x squared minus 48x equals 10 squared. Okay, the argument equals the base raised to the exponent, and the exponent is always on the other side from the log. When you're using, when there's a number there. Okay, so that's going to be x squared 
minus 48x equals 100. And I will subtract 100 from both sides. X squared minus 48x minus 100 equals 100 minus 100 there. Well, that's zero over here. And here we have a typical quadratic equation, which is probably factorable. Negative 100. All right, well, first 100 equals two times 50. So negative 100 is going to equal negative two times positive 50 or positive two times negative 50. And if I add two plus negative 50, 50, I will get negative 48. So those are my two numbers. Boom, 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 using sound effects today. X, X, plus two, minus 50. And I do the thing I always do when I'm solving quadratic equations. I set each of these linear factors equal to zero. X plus two equals zero, x minus 50 equals zero. Um, subtract two from both sides. x equals negative two. Add 50 to both sides. x equals 50. OK. Now, I'm in danger of putting both of those answers in the answer box and totally ignoring what I said about you have to look at your domain first. OK, the only answer my math lab allows for this is 50. Because 50 is greater than 48. Negative 2 is definitely not. So we mark out negative two. So sorry, negative two, but we take 50 and we're very happy with it. And that is how you solve these more advanced kinds of logarithmic equations. This used the product rule. Let's use one more that uses the quotient rule. There, this one. Ah, not only does it use the quotient rule. Oh, uh, let's do this. Never mind. Number 14. We'll come back to 13 because that uses the other method. Number 14. We have the log which is log base 10 of 6x plus 5 minus the log of x minus 4 equals 1. And you can see that the answer they come up with is 45 over 4, in case you're curious. But let's do this with our step one first. You're going to have to do it sooner or later anyway. So step one, find domains. Of 6x plus 5. 
and x minus 4. Okay, so let's do it. 6x plus 5 greater than 0. Subtract 5, subtract 5. 6x is greater than negative 5. Divide by 6, divide by 6. x will have to be greater than negative 5 sixths. All right, now come over here. x minus 4 is greater than 0. Add 4. To both sides. X will have to be greater than 4. Now draw your little number line. This is totally for you on your paper. I'll be very happy if I see little x axes on your paper as you try to figure out the domains of each one and then merge them. Okay, so infinity, negative infinity. All right, if this is zero and this is one, oh, and this is negative one, negative five, six is about here. And then two, three, Four. Might as well make a five and a six just to kind of give a context. OK, now. X has to be greater than negative five sixths. And. X has to be greater than four. This is the only area where the two domains agree. We have to take the area where they both agree, where both of the, the arrows are at the same time. So this is going to be the domain of the whole problem. Our answer, answer will have to be greater. Answer must be greater than four. So now we do this. I have to write it down here first. OK, let me actually write it out. Log 6x plus 5 minus log x minus 4. Sort of emphasized that minus, didn't I? Equals 1. That's because it's so important that you notice it. That means we have to use the quotient rule when we smoosh these together into one logarithmic statement. So this will be log 6x plus 5 over x minus 4 equals 1 and put my 10 down there. All right, this was the quotient rule of logarithms. Quotient. Or property, whatever. Now we use the definition of a logarithm, the argument.
equals the base raised to that power. Now we're going to solve this. This is a rational equation, but at least it's small. Okay, um, we've had it much worse. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by X minus four. This is X minus four over one. The X minus four up here is canceled by the X minus four down there, leaving me with six X plus five equals 10 X minus 40. I distributed the 10. Now we solve this. I get my X terms together on one side of the equal sign, my number terms together on the other side of the, my constant terms, if you wanna be technical. All right, so first I'm going to subtract six X from both sides. So five equals four, X minus 40. And then I'm going to add 40 to both sides. That'll give me 45 on the left and on the right for X. Then I divide both sides by four and divide both sides by four. And my answer is X equals 45 over four. And so my problem might be, gee, I wonder if that's bigger than four. Well, it is, but let's make sure. I mean, if you feel like you need to make sure. Forty five divided by four, it doesn't hurt to check. 11.25 is definitely greater than four. So we can go with that answer. Yay! Okay, a couple of more problems, then we can take a break. We're going to go back to 13. Number 13. This is different. Log base 2 of t plus 27 minus log base 2. of t plus seven equals, are you ready? Log base two of t. We're going to have to use a different method this time because we have logs on the left and logs on the right. Before, we had logs on the left and numbers on the right. But now we've got logs everywhere. The method is called the property of a one-to-one -one function. But really it's more like common sense, as you'll see. All right, so, but the method Property, property of 
one to one functions and logarithms are one to one. They look like this, which is definitely one to one passes the horizontal line test. So let me write it out explicitly. Logs are one to one. All right, well, we still have to do our step one. Which is to find the domains. T plus 27, T plus 7, and T. Ooh, get to graduate to three colors. All right, so T plus 27 greater than 0. Subtract 27 from both sides. T has to be greater than negative 27. T plus 7 is greater than 0. Subtract 7, subtract 7. So T will have to be any number greater than 7. And T has to be greater than zero, period. What else do you say? So now I will draw my X axis, which is also called the number line. Well, okay. Negative uh, 27 negative seven, and zero. And then I'll graph my greater thans. So whatever T is, it's gotta be greater than 27. It's got to be greater than, I mean, negative 27. It's got to be greater than negative 27. It's got to be greater than 7. And it's got to be greater than 0. Which means this is going to be the domain of the whole problem. And what that means is the answer has to be greater than zero. Because we have to keep all, all three of these happy by the same number. And it's only in here we can find numbers that will satisfy all three of these inequalities. Okay, and then I don't bother to say step two, solve. I suppose I should. OK. So there. The first thing I'm going to do is use the quotient rule because of this minus sign. You've got log minus log. Mm. So we're going to have log base 2, it says base 2, of t plus 27 over t plus 7, 
equals log base two. of t. I'll scroll this up now. OK. It just stands to reason, doesn't it? But this is also the property of one to one functions. That log base two and log base two, I mean, these are both log base two arguments. they must be equal to each other. It just stands to reason, doesn't it? But it is a property of one-to-one -one functions. So when you have logs on both sides, this is what you do. You, you smush together the logs on the left, you smush together the logs on the right, if there's more than one, and then you set the arguments equal to each other. So T, plus 27 over t plus 7 equals t. Baba. I haven't canceled out the logs. I've just gone beyond them. I've said that if I have a log on the left and a log on the right, well, the arguments have got to be equal to each other. OK, so I have this. I'm going to multiply both sides by T plus 7 in order to get rid of the denominator. Boom, boom, and remember that's the same thing as over one. So I'll have T plus 27 equals T squared plus 7T. That's a quadratic equation. I have to move everything. <coughs> Excuse me. everything over to one side. I always, or almost always, try to move everything over to where the quadratic term, the squared term is positive when I've got a quadratic equation. T squared plus 6T, seven minus one is six, minus 27. Okay, so now, zero equals boom, 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 boom. Let's see, 27, I know it's negative, but first 27 equals three times nine. Yeah, okay. So negative 27 will equal negative three times positive nine, and that's the one that works, I, it, but it could also have equaled positive three times negative nine, However, negative three plus positive nine equals positive six, and that's what I want. So we'll have t and t and minus three and plus nine. And then I set each of the linear factors <clears throat> equal to zero and solve. So T equals negative nine. Well, 
If all of our T's have to be greater than zero, I should have written that down too. T has to be greater than zero. The negative nine is just not gonna make it. So T equals three is gonna be our answer. It's gonna be the solution. And that's what I put in the answer box. Is there anything else you absolutely need to see now? We better do one with the LNs and then we'll take a break. So this is number 15, the last problem in your homework. This homework. Um, 15, yeah. All right, the ln of x plus 9 plus the ln of x minus 3 equals 2 times <clears throat> the ln of x. Okay, well, we're going to have to do our thing with the domain first. We're going to have x plus 9 is greater than 0, x minus 3 is greater than 0, and x is greater than 0. So let's just do this. Minus 9, minus 9, plus 3, plus 3. X is greater than negative 9, and X is greater than 3, and X is greater than 0. So, here's my X axis negative 9, positive 3, and 0 goes in the middle. So x has to be greater than negative 9, x has to be greater than 0, and x has to be greater than 3. Therefore, our answers answer or answers will have to be greater than three, not equaling three, greater than three. And now, we are going to use the product rule on these. but I'm going to use the power rule on these, on this, because that two has to come up there because you have to have LN argument equals LN argument. then you can use the, the uh, property of one-to-one -one functions. So, over here we're going to have, let me make brackets, x plus nine, times x minus 3, and over here, x squared. Had to bring that 2 up there. Now I'm ready. You can go ahead and multiply these inside the argument, or just say, hey, x plus 9 times x minus 3 is going to equal 
x squared. Okay, well then, x squared uh, minus 3x plus 9x minus 27 equals x squared. So x squared plus 6x minus 27 equals x squared. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Now, subtract x squared from both sides and look what happens. Is that beautiful or is that beautiful? Butamus. We'll have 6x minus 27 equals 0. Add 27 to both sides. You could take out a GCF first. Whoop. If that's what you want. But it's not really necessary. X equals. Okay, 3 goes into 27. This is if you're doing it by hand. Your calculator will do this for you. 27 divided by 3 is 9, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. So 9 over 2 is your answer. Now, is it greater than uh, 3? Is it 3? Don't try to remember. Three. Answers have to be greater than three. So yes, nine over two is 4.5. If you put it in your calculator, which is definitely bigger than three, so yay. That's our answer. It is 9.50. Let's take a break until five minutes after 10. You deserve it. Then we're going to be working on some science problems. Ooh.